Hello, thank you for joining today's presentation regarding Index Engine CyberSense product. CyberSense provides analytics integrated with the Dell EMC cyber recovery solution to protect organizations from cyber attacks and ransomware. Index Engines provides technology that really can directly manage backup data. Uh, that's a key component to this workflow with the cyber recovery solution. Direct indexing of backup images, whether, whether it be on tape or disk, like data domain, supports all popular backup software, including NetBackup, TSM, Commvault, Networker, and others. Um, there's no need for the original backup software, index engines, and CyberSense can directly image, directly index and manage those backup images. So we provide solutions to be able to search and access or restore content from backup, mostly in support of regulatory needs and migration. Today we're gonna to be talking about how we provide support for security applications like cyber recovery. Why CyberSense? CyberSense was created really to provide another layer of protection on top of real-time malware. It's not a replacement for real-time malware protection and software applications, but it's really an, a, a, an additional layer of defense. So we have, have to assume that uh, real-time protection is not 100% uh, bulletproof. It fails. It fails because we hear of attacks happening every day. So with CyberSense, it provides a layer of protection that looks at the files and databases and looks for corruption that, that occurs, specifically slow attacks. It's not gonna provide a, any support for a fast attack like denial of service or some other fast attack. It's really about slow attacks, uh, typically like the, the Sony attack that occurred years ago that uh, was in process for months, if not years. Um, it can see how data changes, it can see how data gets corrupted, and it can allow you to stop this slow attack uh, as quickly as within one backup cycle within the, the cyber recovery vault. The attack vectors that CyberSense is focused on are uh, all the common attack vectors that exist today. Uh, typically, a lot around uh, file encryption, um, database encryption, uh, looking at um, file deletion, file removal, looking at files that become corrupt. Uh, typically, we can see files that could be uh, corrupted and, and changed to a zero byte character file. Uh, we see encryption inside files. We see encryption inside uh, database pages. Uh, so this is really all the common attack vectors that exist today uh, by the cyber attacks. And this is really what CyberSense is focused on. The data types supported are unstructured files. So many organizations may not think about putting unstructured files in the cyber recovery vault. Uh, we think it's important to have these files scanned on a regular basis. So to add them to the vault is a critical component. Things like contracts, agreements, intellectual property. Um, CyberSense also supports databases. It looks inside the pages of a database, such as Oracle, SQL, as well as email databases like Exchange and Notes and looks for uh, basically encryption of pages of these databases. Can also look for some, some corruption of, of file names and extensions and things like that as well, but mostly looking for uh, encryption inside the uh, database pages. So let's talk about the workflow for CyberSense. Uh, it's been integrated with the Dell EMC Cyber Recovery product. It's been integrated over many, many months of, of work. So it, it comes as a solution that can be enabled and activated within the uh, cyber recovery product once that is released later this year. Uh, so the integration is, is very tight. The first step is the replication of the backup data. Um, this is managed by the cyber recovery solution where the backup data is replicated to the vault. Um, at this point, uh, the cyber recovery product uh, informs Index Engine, CyberSense, that the backup has completed, retention lock has been applied, and at that point, index engines would uh, support the direct indexing of that backup image. Backup image is scanned. Uh, again, the original backup software is not required within the cyber recovery vault, uh, another advantage of the solution, and it directly index the, the backup image. 
uh, whether it be networker, it could be TSM, it could be Combo, it depends on uh, what the customer has implemented. And at this point, there's about 40 or more statistics that are generated. So looking at the files and the databases, uh, these statistics are generated a, basically for analysis on indicators of an attack. Uh, these statistics are outlined uh, here. This, here's, there's a few of them. Um, basically, there's statistics generated on the first pass into the vault or the first population of data in the vault. So many organizations want to know that what they're putting in the vault is clean and has not been corrupted already from a data point of view. Uh, these statistics will help you determine that. Uh, the statistics on the first pass include things like entropy. Entropy is a analysis of files. Uh, we also do um, entropy of database pages as well. So entropy is a measure of random uh, disorder of a file or a database page. Uh, we assign a score up from 0 to 100. So you can look at the average entropy of files. So for example, if you're seeing a number of Word documents that have an entropy score of 90, which is very high, um, there could be something wrong with those files. Um, also looking at corrupt or aborted files, so files that have been corrupted, uh, maybe zero byte character files. Uh, we also look at file types and extension mismatch. So some of the ransomware attacks could be stripping out the extension of a Word doc and making it like .loki. Um, Index Engine CyberSense will look at the header of the uh, Word doc and determine that it is a Word doc, but the extension does not match. So on the first pass, uh, first population is the vault. There's a number of statistics that are generated here um, that have value that, that would determine. Um, in this case, the analysis we've done is with 95% accuracy that the data is either uh, corrupted or is in fact clean. Um, the subsequent comparisons, which we consider observations based on new backups, so as new backups occur into the vault, into the cyber recovery vault, we look at that as a new observation. So with new observations, you can compare um, how the data changes from the previous observation. Uh, so look at how the entropy changes. Uh, we also include other, other measurements, um, uh, other analysis of, for example, similarity of files when files suddenly become very dissimilar um, and change. Uh, we also look, as I mentioned, uh, the pages of uh, databases to see if the uh, entropy score has increased. So the idea is that as you look at, at every observation that occurs as the as backup occurs into the into the cyber recovery vault, you will see additional statistics that are generated, um, number of files that have changed, and so on, file sizes in the backup set. So these 40 or more statistics that are generated um, provide significant insight into the data um, changes to the data of, or files or databases. Um, this is based not on typical user changes, it's based on the attack vectors that exist, such as uh, encryption. What we've heard, though, is that customers really don't want to spend all the time analyzing these, these, these statistics. So what we've done is we've um, incorporated machine learning. So what machine learning does is we have trained these machine learning algorithms with all common uh, attack vectors or ransomware that exists on the market today. So it really looks for uh, typical changes that would occur based on, on those, uh, those ransomware. And take the, the machine learning and analyze those 40 or more statistics um, to basically analyze it based on common malware and threats that exist. Now, what we found is that most malware um, has a typical uh, behavior in terms of encrypting files and corrupting files. None of that changes even as new malware comes on the market. So we see, you know, two, three, four different new malware that, that appear every day. But the actual uh, actual um, corruption that they do on files or databases doesn't change. So by using the machine learning, uh, we're re really not seeing any many updates to the machine learning except for new names of, of, of malware that may exist. So by applying the machine learning, CyberSense comes out with a deterministic uh, yes or no or red light, green light decision saying uh, no or green light saying the, the data looks fine. It looks like there has not been any corruption of the data. Red light meaning something's wrong. Um, and it'll also report on the backup set that has been attacked. It'll also report on the type of attack vector um, that, that was used. 
Um, there also are queries and reports available that would assist in finding the files that have been attacked, files or databases that have been attacked. So at this point, if you do get a, a red light situation, and that uh, red light situ situation is reported to the cyber recovery dashboard um, that will exist in the product later this year and provide an alert that says something has happened here that requires further investigation. And then we'll provide you know, guidance to what files or databases have been corrupted. And then that process is, re is repeated. Every time data is backed up to the, to the vault, um, the analysis, the analytics, the statistics will be generated, the machine learning will be applied, and you'll get a report back through the cyber recovery dashboard, whether uh, there's a, a green light, everything's okay, or a red light situation, meaning there's some alert that needs to be investigated, and the cyber team needs to look at um, what's happened here. So that's the workflow, um, fully integrated with the cyber recovery product once it's released on the market. Um, the tech specs here, backup software supported. As I mentioned, we support all the common backup formats, uh, specifically uh, Dell EMC Networker. We're also adding support for Avamar uh, version 7.5.10 um, to be supported, um, and that'll be supported in the September timeframe um, in time for the release of the cyber recovery product. Um, as far as hardware specs, you'll need to reach out to us on your specific situation. It really depends on the front end capacity coming into the vault and the frequency of the analytics. Um, if the analytics are being uh, performed daily uh, versus weekly, that has an impact. Um, and, but basically it runs on virtual servers within the vault, um, anywhere from six to 20 CPUs or, and or 128 to 200 gig memory, depending on the type of data, the volume of data and so on. Um, again, here's more of a detailed workflow. Um, what you can see is the production data domain. Um, and the vault data domain inside, inside the cyber recovery vault. Um, the index of engine servers, which would be uh, virtual servers, would be deployed inside the vault. Uh, the management host, which is the cyber recovery management host um, inside the vault, would basically manage all the communication and all the activity. So as normal uh, production backup occurs, um, the vault data domain is notified that production backup has happened will open access to the vault, the replication port, and replicate the backup data into the vault. At that point, the vault data domain will disable the data domain interface. So everything that's happened here in these, these blue-gray arrows um, is through the cyber recovery product. Uh, at that point, retention lock is, is applied, and then the cyber recovery product notifies uh, CyberSense, index and servers, that replication is complete. So at that point, index engine servers would index the backup in the vault data domain, apply the uh, analysis, generate the statistics, and validate the backup, and then feed that report results back to the cyber recovery product um, for display in the, in the dashboard. There also is another option of being able to extract out of the backup images any suspect files. Um, into an inspection folder for further analysis. And there's some work being done on that to really provide added value beyond just what CyberSense provides today uh, for more inspection and analysis of suspected corrupt files. So uh, pretty integrated workflow, uh, fully supported today. So as you deploy the cyber recovery product, again, the CyberSense product is really just a a Docker that's deployed and fully integrated with the cyber recovery product uh, to work immediately um, as the vaults are uh, built and deployed. So key benefits of CyberSense is really to provide a level of reporting, an additional level of reporting really to detect any kind of indicators of compromise or an attack, uh, looking for things like encryption, ransomware, destruction, slow corruption of the data. Uh, one of the key advantages that, that is that CyberSense performs direct indexing of the content in the backup. So without the need to rehydrate the data out of the backup image. So which really controls any kind of uh, corruption or attack that's in progress, it'll impede it or stop it from continuing, continuing to activate the ransomware. So the analysis that's done in the backup images really doesn't allow the ransomware to spread any further. 
Um, again, no need for the original backup software in the vault index engine handles the direct access to the backup images. And what we've seen based on our analysis is that the initial scan of the back backup image can detect an, uh, an attack occurring with up to 95% accuracy. So for, for um, clients that are looking for some confidence that the data that's going into the vault is clean and has not already been corrupted, um, this is the answer to that question. Uh, subsequent observations or passes um, analysis of the, the backup data increase the detection capabilities up to 99%. So contact information here, there's a technology uh, overview of the product that goes into significant more technical details on what we're doing here. Um, send us an email to info at index engines asking about CyberSense and we will get back to you and answer all your questions. Uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for your attention here. And we look forward to speaking to you in the future.